Hello everyone. In this section, we will talk about linear functions of random variable and a combination of random variables, two or three random variables, and we try to find the probability. So this is similar. We have seen it when we discussed events. So if I have a random variable y and it's equal ax plus b, that's this one here. And I want to find the mean of the random variable y. So it will be the constant a times the mean of the random variable x plus the constant b. And if I want to find the variance of the random variable y, it is a squared times the variance of the random variable x. Standard deviation is just the square root. So you take the absolute value of a standard deviation of x. Now, if I have a third random variable, z, in term of two other random variable, ax plus by. So the two random variable here is x and y. And I want to find the mean of the random variable, z. So that will be a the constant time the mean of the random variable x plus the constant time the mean of the random variable y. And these two random variables, x and y, they don't have to be independent or dependent. doesn't matter if they have a relationship with each other or not. This is true always for independent or dependent variables. And if you have a combination of several random variables, x1, x2, xn, then the mean will be the sum of the individual means. Now let's take a special case when the two variables are independent. So assume we have a random variable x and a random variable y. And I need to find what is the probability that the random variable x will be in this range and the probability that the random variable y will be in this range, t. So s is a range could be from 2 to 4, T is a range could be from 0.1 to 0.7. So what's this joint probability? If the two variables are independent, then this probability will equal the individual probability of x falling in this range multiplied by the probability y fall in this range. And this is true if I have more than two random variables, like x1, x2, xn. What's the probability these random variables falls in this range, s1, s2, sn? Then this will equal the individual probability of x1 fall in this range s1 time x2 fall in s2 range and so forth. And an example of two random variables, x and y, could be amplification is a random variable, I call it x. The input voltage, I can call it y. And I just want to see what's the probability that the voltage fall between 3 and 5 volt and the amplification will be between 10 and 12. These are application in the engineering. And there are application in the medical field and other fields. And we will see some examples. Now the variance. If x1 all the way to xn are independent random variables and I sum these random variable x1, x2 plus all the way to xn, then the variance of this summation will equal the sum of the variance of each random variable. And this is true only if they are independent. And if I have a random variable y, that is c1 constant x1 plus c2 x2 plus all the way to cn xn, then the variance of the random variable y will be the constant c1 squared, and we showed that earlier when we talked about event, times the variance of x1 squared plus c2 squared times the variance of x2 plus all the way to cn squared times the variance of xn. And this is true only if x1, x2 are independent random variable. If they are not independent, then it's a, a different calculation. And a special case here, if you have these two random variables, x plus y or x minus y, 
the variance will be the variance of x squared plus the variance of pi squared. Same thing here. So you can really think of it as C1 here is 1, and in this case, in this case, C2 equal 1, but here the constant will be minus 1. Since you square the minus 1, you square the C2, that will be 1. So this will be the same thing. It doesn't matter if you add or subtract the variables, the variance will be the sum. And that's intuitively makes sense because the variation will be the same. If you add them, you are adding variations. If you subtract them, you are subtracting variation. And the variation will always have positive negative value. So it won't make a difference if you add them or subtract them. Let's do this example. A piston is placed inside the cylinder. So let's draw the cylinder here and the piston here. The clearance is the distance between the edge of the piston and the wall of the cylinder. So let's call this the clearance C and is equal to one half the difference between the cylinder diameter and the piston diameter. So let's call this the diameter D2 of the piston and this is D1 of the cylinder. So the clearance is one half the difference between D1 and D2. Assume the piston diameter has a mean of 80.85. So the mean of D2 is 80.85 centimeter. With a standard deviation, the standard deviation 0.02 centimeter. Assume the cylinder diameter, so that's the mean of D1 is 80. 0.95 with a standard deviation sigma d1 is 0.03 find the mean clearance and the standard deviation so they want the mean of c and the standard deviation of c assuming that the piston and cylinder are chosen independently or we can say the machine that made this cylinder and this piston are not related so they are independent on the variation of D1 and D2. And D1 and D2 are not affecting each other. Then the mean of the clearance equal, using this equation, half the mean of D1 minus half the mean of D2. And this is half 80.95 minus half 80.85. And when you calculate these, you should get... 0.05. The variance of C equal the constant squared times the variance of D1 plus the constant squared times the variance of D2. So that is one fourth time the variance D1 is the square of 0.03 plus one fourth time the standard deviation squared or 0.02 squared. So if you calculate this, you should get 0.000325. And if you need the standard deviation, then you take the square root 0.018. All right, the next topic is independence and simple random sample. And this is a very important concept. We apply it to population and take a sample of the population and then we study uh, the property of the population through the sample. So if I have a population and it's very large population and I take a sample that insists of x1, x2 all the way to xn. Now if this is a simple random sample that means picking up x2 has no effect on picking up x3 then i can consider each value here as a random variable and they are independent since x1 does not affect how the value of x2 and in this case we say that random variable x1 x2 xn are independent and identically distributed that means the probability that x2 will come equal the same probability 
as x1. So the values of x1, x2, xn will be the possible values in this population. And each value for x1 will have the same probability as the value chosen for x2. And they are independent. So in that case, if the sample is independent and identically distributed, then we can do the following. We will study here the relationship between the sample mean and the variance and the population mean and the variance or the standard deviation. So if I have a population and assume I know mu and the standard deviation of the population and I took a sample of size n. So I have here x1, x2, x3, xn. If I try to find the sample mean, then it will be x bar equal x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by n. And this we call it the sample mean. Now, if somebody else take another sample from the same population with the same size, same items n, and calculate the x bar, it will be different than this x bar. It may be the same it may be a little bit different. So there will be a variation. If a third or fifth person take another sample, he again will get X bar and it will be a little bit different. We want to know what's the relationship, how much variation between these sample means and the size of the sample n, and how do they relate to the mean and the standard deviation of the population. So we said, okay, the sample mean is the sum of all data collected from the population divided by n. So if I find the mean of x bar, it would be 1 over n is a constant, so I will take it out. So that would be the mean of x1 plus the mean of x2 plus the mean of xn. So now I am treating x1, x2 as random variables. Because if I run this sample or this experiment again, x1 will have different values. So it's a random variable. And I am also assuming that the random variable x1 is independent from the random variable x2. Because if I choose x1 and it came 10, x2 could be 11, 12, 10. It won't be affected by the choice of x1. And I'm also, since I'm assuming they are independent, that means the population here is very large. So if they are coming x1 and x2 and x3, if they are coming from the same population, then their mean will be mu. So this will be 1 over n mu plus mu plus mu plus all the way the n mu. So I have here n data point, I have here n mu, so 1 over n time n mu, and that is mu. So basically that means if I take this x bar and this x bar of this another sample and another sample the average of all these will come to be the same as the average of the population mu and if i want to know how much variation between this x bar and this x bar and this x bar every time i conduct the experiment so then i find the variance of this one i can rewrite x bar as follows 1 over n x1 plus 1 over n x2 plus 1 over n xn. Now the variance of x bar is the constant square, so that will be 1 over n square, times the variance of x1, plus 1 over n square, times the variance of x2, plus 1 over n square, the variance of xn. Since x1, x2, x3 coming from the population, they will have the same variance as a population. So that is the variance plus 1 over n, the variance, plus 1 over n, variance. So there are n of them. So this is n, the variance, divided by n squared. So that's the variance divided by n. And if I need to find the standard deviation of the sample mean, it is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And this is this one. Okay, let's do this example. A process that filled plastic bottles with 
a beverage has a mean fill volume of 2.013 so mu equal 2.013 liter and the standard deviation of 0.005 now a case contains 24 bottles so we are filling a case here so that you can think of it as a sample space of size 24 bottle a simple random sample piece find the mean and the standard deviation of the average volume per bottle in a case so I have here let's call each bottle here x1 x2 all the way to x24 and I want to find the average well, we just showed the mean of x is just the mean of the population so that will be 2.013 and the standard deviation of the bottles in the sample equal the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n so that will be 0.0 0 0.05 divided by the square root of 24 and this should come 0 0.001 and this should make sense the variation between bottles in the population is 0.5 percent the variation between the sample mean that means if I take another sample here another sample here if I call this x1, this is x2, this is x3, will be less the variation because now I am averaging 24 bottles all together. So the variation between this mean will be much smaller than the variation between bottles inside the population. And that's why when we average, we cancel noise because variation is due to noise. So when you average, you eliminate noise and you keep the signal constructively added. Thank you for watching this video and see you next video.